So, what's the transition during development towards the development of aggression, the development of empathy, the development of compassionate behavior, cooperation, all of that, widely, widely studied, tons of research that's been done in this area, much of it ultimately framed along the lines of what is the development of moral standards, moral development in kids. But what's pertinent comes long before that. Very early in life, the most pertinent initial transition is when kids start distinguishing between animate and inanimate objects. And that comes remarkably early during the first few days to weeks of life. That's a very early transition. And as I think we have heard already, um, what you see is this specialized region of the brain, the fusiform cortex that responds to faces, and the fact that autistic individuals, that part of their brains, do not respond to faces as in everybody else, not necessarily distinguishing between animate and inanimate. So initial stage, first beginning to get that dichotomy down. What then emerges is the first evidence of kids beginning to differentiate themselves from the world around them, beginning to get a sense of self. And this is where kids begin to get ego boundaries of some sort. Before that happens, a kid very typically views themselves as basically being continuous with mom. And this is the world where you see a 12-month-old where mom has a cut on her finger and has been walking around with a Band-Aid, and the kid is there all day saying that they have an owie on their finger because they are mom, mom is them, there is no particular boundary between them. Around a year of age is when you begin to see this starting to happen. So a sense of self. What that, of course, has to be a precursor for is a sense of others being selves theory of mind. So we've already heard the building blocks of theory of mind. When do kids first begin to recognize that not only are they a distinct individual, but there are other individuals with different information, with different thoughts, ultimately with different feelings? And when does that begin to emerge? Typically between ages three to five. And we've already heard some of the basic sort of tests that are done to reveal that. And what you also see is it is very, very emotionally contingent. Take a kid who is doing great theory of mind when you read them some abstract story about Sally May or who is it? Sarah Ann. Sally Ann? Okay, I seem to not be able to get this one down. That, that kid with a doll there, read them, and they may be at a point where they're three, six months into being able to perfectly do tests like that, but get them in an emotionally aroused circumstance where it's something they really care about, as opposed to like some story there, and the theory of mind goes down the tubes at that point. It is not an all or none transition. It is one that is vulnerable, potentially to strong emotions. Go figure, not surprising. So what a lot of people have thought about is, is theory of mind a prerequisite for empathy? Is it possible to feel somebody else's pain and act upon it without having a sense that there is a somebody else who has different thoughts and most importantly different feelings and they can be bad feelings, things of that sort? Is theory of mind a prerequisite for empathy? And the general sense among a lot of people in the field is, yes, indeed. It is necessary, but not sufficient. And where you see the most dramatic dissociation between theory of mind and empathy is when you look at sociopaths. By every sort of, sort of test that could be done, sociopaths have spectacular theories of mind. They are incredibly good at manipulating people, and manipulation requires a very, very astute theory of mind to be able to do that. Sociopaths have the prerequisite of theory of mind that most people think that empathy requires, but what you have there is it stops at that point. It does not continue. It is a means for exploitation rather than the transition into true empathy. As we've already heard, there's evidence for empathy like of that sort and theory of mind in apes, so we're not the only ones. So general view being that you don't get empathy until you get theory of mind. But there's always been this confusing sort of counter bit of evidence where you see stuff like 
the world of a 15-month-old where somebody is sitting in the room crying and often an experiment, someone who is pretending to, and the 15-month-old will come up and try to give the passy to the person and try to put it in their mouth. Here, feel better. So, possible interpretations, number one being that this is already evidence of empathy. Empathy not yet having the theory of mind element of not only recognizing there's somebody else, but not everybody likes passies, especially mine that I've been slobbering on. Other interpretation, an irritation decreasing strategy, which is it's simply distressing having the person in there acting all upset. and. What's going to make them shut up? I know. I'm going to go over to them and give them my stuffy, and maybe that will work. It is not empathy. It is irrit attempts to get away from this irritating context. Studies, very interestingly, though, arguing against that. Take kids during their first three to six months of life and show them a scenario where two people are interacting, one of them needs help, and the other helps them, or one of them needs help, and the other doesn't, or one of them has something and the other one takes the thing away from them, so either pro-social behavior, neutral or antisocial behavior, and kids in that age range already prefer to look at the individual who's doing the pro-social helpful thing. So some sort of elements of this are already in there before formal theory of mind. Nonetheless, that seems to be a big important part of it.